My name is Kimberly Cato, and I'm the registered psychotherapist and CEO of True Roots Counseling Services, where we purpose to come alongside people who are overwhelmed and perhaps blindsided by life-altering circumstances and give them tools and strategies designed to help them, you know, transform their trauma into triumph. Christian Jacobs holds a bachelor's degree in communications and a master's degree in marriage and family therapy with an emphasis on child and family therapy. Christian is trained as a marriage and family therapist registered with the California Board of Behavioral Sciences and as a member of the California Association of Marriage and Family Therapists, C-A-M-F-T. And he practices in coaching and wellness. Christian has several years of experience working with families and youth, individuals and families in public, private, and correctional institutions who have been challenged by chronic illness such as depression, anxiety, and grief. Christian is a mental health clinician and also works with ver various state agencies as a behavioral health consultant and specialist. Thank you so very much, Christian, for joining us on the panel today. It's true, we, um, we can do so much more with the church um there there's it's a it's a good gateway um in some instances um but i i really liked what he said about it being more um like a triage um spot so a, a place where you can identify that more is necessary than just prayer and that if it were possible as well to make it a place that was safe to I, you know, express the fact that there is more than I need. Um, and, and then uh, a, a, a place from there to go to get that more that is needed when it is necessary. Thank you. And anyone Hi, Kim. else? Hi. Hi, Kimberly. Oh, and, um, yes, I made it. I made it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I cut. I cut part of the uh, part of the that uh, clip, but I got the essence of um, what he was speaking on, and um, he touched on several good points because, as you're saying, you know, the church can be used as a triage, and I think, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the good points he really made was putting the onus on the church as an actual provider to be culturally competent. And a lot of times in church, what happens is a lot of individuals in church go to the pastor for, for counseling or marital advice, hoping that that pastor is competent enough to be able to counsel. But unfortunately, a lot of times um, they're, they're not competent. They don't have the skills and the training yeah. to uh, uh, consult someone on marriage and or um, tell someone, you know, uh, or diagnose them. So. Um, I think it's really good that he did bring that point up that, you know, uh, it's on the provider to become culturally competent. And that doesn't require a um, minister to go to school to become a, a social worker or a therapist. But there's other um, uh, smaller things they can do, such as um, attending first aid uh, mental health training or yeah. um, first yeah, aid, yeah. Um, you know, in terms of you have those individuals there who can do that. And another component is, you know, um, there's, there's a lack of uh, premarital counseling within the black community, right? Mm -hmm. So when you do, when a, when a family does finally do want to come and, you know, think about getting married or want some advice, um, they go to a, a, a pastor who says one or two things, right? If you're living in the same house, get married. You know, that's the advice. 
you know, coming from the yeah. past or from the old church, you know, get yeah. married, get married, living in sin, living in sin. But yeah. There's more in between than just telling someone to get married and ruining that person's life even more when they're marrying someone who they shouldn't be married to. So um, mm. those are just my takes from it. I think uh, he made some really good points on putting the onus on that provider, which could be the church. Absolutely. Um, Kimberly? Yes. Can I say something really quick, really fast? I know we're pressed for time. Yeah, um, I just want to speak really quick to Danny's comment, um, just on um, her the, the word choice she's using in terms of not being turned out she's not smart, and I think that's another thing that you know in terms of um, potential stigma is looking at not yeah. smart looking a certain way, and if you don't look a certain yeah. way, then you're not considered smart. And I just want to let you know that you know there's smart looks several different ways. You know yeah. um, there are several different geniuses who have mental conditions. And many, many geniuses were neuro, neurodivergent, which means your mind thinks differently. So people who are autistic or have ADHD, these are things that are conditions that not necessarily are bad, but uh, you're neurodiverse, meaning you think a different way. So yeah. um, I just want to just put that out there, you know, to, you know, so you can maybe use those choice of words and saying, you know, start talking to yourself, saying, I'm, yeah. you know, the way I think is, is diverse versus I'm not smart enough. You know, stigmas yeah. thinking smart looks a certain way, and artists are um, some artists hone on to their uh, conditions by you know putting that in artistry, and a lot of them are may have middle conditions. So I just wanted to put that out there. Awesome, thank you.